Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Noam Berg here for Mifflin Wooden Iron Manufactory. I want to tell you a little bit about the Shave Horse. This is a very old work holding device. Dates back at least to the 1500s, if not earlier. It was certainly used in early America and colonial times, probably right up into the 19th century, and then less and less as the Industrial Revolution took over. So this is a woodworking device, basically it's a bench with a built-in clamp. This is how it works. You sit down at the bench, you take a piece of wood you want to work with, clamp down with your feet, and then you should use a draw knife, like so. For finer work, you use a spoke shape. The idea being you push with your foot and this head comes down and the harder you push, the tighter the hold. And this has very good grip. You grip your piece in here really nicely. If you have shorter pieces, this was actually designed with a little shelf here, what a woodworker would call a rabbit. That you can put a piece here, and if it's a shorter piece I could show you, but you lean it against your chest and sort of work it like so. People used to wear something called a bodger's bib. A bodger is somebody who would make legs and spindles and parts for chairs and furniture and stuff. They would work a lot on a shape horse and have a little piece of leather on a string around their neck that would sit right here and protect their sternum from pieces that would to be holding in place. Um, I do not have a small piece of wood or a bodger's bib right now, so we'll dispense with that. As you can see, this thing grips quite nicely. Take your draw knife and just sort of shave down, hence shave horse, or as it's known in German, the schnitzelbank, which is a lot of fun to say, and there's even a song about it. So if you're working on a square piece that you need to make round, or maybe a piece that you just need to thin down, a whole lot of wood at once, you're going with the bevel side up, or you can switch it around bevel side down. Take more controlled strokes. So if you're making a leg for a chair or a bench, if you're working on, say in my case, if I'm doing my spoon carving and whatnot, this is very useful for that. There are a bunch of different designs of shave horses. This is based on a German or Swiss design. Um, the initial plan that I saw for this was published by a green woodworker named Drew Langsner. Um, he has since uh, switched to a slightly more evolved shave horse that was designed by Brian Boggs. This is based on one of his older models. So, you've got a head that when you let go of the leg, it swings back. Partially that's because the holes in here are aligned, sort of offset. They're not right in the middle of this arm. So it swings right back and opens up so you can put your piece in. One of the great thing about a shave horse is if you're working on something you need to make round, do that with a traditional woodworking vise mounted to a bench. Other features of this design, um, my favorite feature is this whole thing comes apart. I'll show you how that happens. The head and the treadle are both wedged in. This is what's called a tusk tenon. So, mortise or a hole like this gets a tenon going through it. In this case, the tenon that's going through the mortise in this head is pegged through with what's called a tusk or sometimes a key. Basically just a little wedge. Knock it apart. Comes off. Comes off. This whole thing. And then out. It's the same thing on the bottom. I get that wedge. Whole thing disassembles. Got these two pegs in here holding the bridge 
on place. Got the riser. Once again here, you see mortises and tenons. And that holds it nice and tight. And these legs, fun story, I worked on these legs using the shave horse. I uh, just mounted the body on a pair of saw horses until they were ready. But these just fit into angle holes. And this whole thing stacks up. easily transported around. If you were to make one that was stationary, you do things a little bit differently. These legs, I would actually slip the top in here and then once they were stuck through, I'd drive a wedge in and glue them into place. Uh, but because I want to be able to take this around in different places easily, shove in the back of a truck and whatnot, leaving it as a knockdown design. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this kind of German pattern, it's, um, it's a little more primitive than, say, the English patterns you'll see, which are a little more complicated. They do have their advantages. I'll probably make one of those, too. Um, but because of the large German population in Philadelphia, I think it's likely we would have seen more of this kind of shaving horse in our area during colonial times, and possibly at Fort Mifflin as well. One of the things these were very good for was making shingles. Uh, you have a piece of wood, you got to thin it down for a shingle. This is the tool that you would use. Anyway, hope you learned something. I certainly learned a lot making this. This is the first shave horse I've ever made. Uh, it won't be the last. I definitely learned a lot doing it and made a lot of mistakes, fixed the mistakes. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's not too hard. If you've done a little bit of woodworking, make your own. Give it a shot. Hope you're having a great day. This is Noah Burke signing out.